exactly the note from heaven, why this book has to come now. It's much more important than than the healing that happens with people. It's just one part of it. So. And why is that? What is the note from heaven? Um, okay, uh, I want, and that's the story is also in the book, and maybe I should show it. This is a book that I just, uh, uh, yesterday it was published, and I don't know. Yes, from what? Watkins Publishing. Congratulations. Flowers from the sea. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Lovely. And uh, I'm so happy for this, uh, also this uh, front page. I mean, uh, I didn't even ask uh, anything. And the woman, she just made it perfect how it should be. I know it's, it's rare. But what happened, and I also have explained it in the book, uh, is um, that I, I was in the conservatory and playing the saxophone. Uh, and I went into this music mostly because it, you know, I could borrow a saxophone when I was in the high school, and I I looked so much up to people that were playing music, and I thought I couldn't do it. And then I borrowed one. They needed one to play in one week, and I just learned it very fast. And that's why I went to the conservatorium in the end. I could feel it like very easy for me. This music, it it I had the wind uh, in the back, if you can say so. Yeah, yeah. It's and uh, what happening? I, I was going crazy for it because I, I didn't work like from the small child. I, I was quite a teenager when I started. So I continued really practicing a lot. And for two years in the conservatory, I got really good. Um, you know, I, I wasn't good in it, but I was also a very good girl. <laughs> Too good. <laughs> so I, I maybe it, it started to come up that maybe there's something else in life than just being good in this. Uh, and it's like a male thing, you know. I, I didn't even choose the instrument, you know. It starts. So uh, the instrument is more associated with male yeah, musicians, right? I like the sound, you know. Um, I like the sound, but but you know maybe actually I always dreamt about singing, but I thought my voice was like, ah, you know, I didn't have the I didn't have this uh, beautiful voice that people sometimes are born with, you know? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I didn't have the courage. Courage? Uh, I didn't yeah, dare. courage, yes, yes. <laughs> you didn't dare, yeah. yeah. So uh, so uh, when my girlfriend said she she was not in the conservatory, but she she was going to India, so I said, ah, I, I would prefer South America if I had to go, but I didn't have any money. So she said, oh, no, she was going to India to learn Shanghai to play that. I so, said, okay, I can ask in the conservatory for money, you know, maybe they will, you know, give me some, some money for, for studying something. I will just study singing, you know, it's most easy. So we can get out to travel for one or two months. And I, I did it and I thought I will not get it because why should they give me money to go to India to study? I, I, I didn't even know anything about Indian music. So we went there. I mean, I, I asked for money just fast. I was writing it and... Uh, didn't think I got in, and then I got a very high degree in this examination, and I got a lot of money, thirty thousand crowns. That's me. It was much money then. And then my girlfriend was pregnant, and she didn't have, so I had to go alone then. <laughs> so, so what happened was um, that I went there. A lot of things happened. I could write a full novel about that, but. Um, I came to find my teacher, Mangala Chiwari, which I didn't know when I left, but somebody told us, oh, she could be a teacher when I went to Varanasi in India. And uh, Mangala was the perfect teacher for me. Um, she's a free, she was a free soul, very, I liked her very much. And how long ago was this? Was this 20 years ago? No, yeah, it's more, it's almost, it's more almost 30 years ago. Yeah. I'm 25 now, 24, 54. So, um, and that all started because Mangala told me to sing one. You go home and you sing one note at least one hour a day. And I came with my soprano saxophone. I told him, uh, but please, Mangala, the soprano saxophone. He listen to me. How fast I can play? And uh, she was not interested in sing. So I went home and I got this uh, tampura with me. This one, and uh, and then she told me you, you sit and you play this, and I also had to learn that. It's quite simple. It's just the same old time. The tuning is what is hard. And then I had to um, sing with this one, and you have the ground note A. She said the same as me. 
So, so say, okay. <laughs> this is another thing. The same as me? Explain that? The same. Yeah, yeah but that's Mangala, you know, Indian ah. words say, okay, you have the same one as I had. It's most, it was most practical like that. But actually, each person has a ground note, has a ground note. It means... And, and is it one of the eight or one of the seven pentatonic notes? Yeah, or? yeah but I mean, for me in this, when I do sound healing or do the sound note from hip, there is no steps. There are no steps. It's like a, all vibration can slide, you know? It's I like slide. it's not chromatic. No, but yes, chromatic. It, it chromatic, but it's kind of chromatic steps when you talk about. But when we like in the Indian singing, you know, sing kind of, you always you always slide almost always. Mm. Ah, this is chromatic, but you ah, you you hit the note, but you all the time slide. And when you do this, you're like giving a massage, you know, also to the body, because if we are sound, then if you jump, you will also jump in the body. So the, the, the frequencies in the body, you would hit them all when you slide. Well, that's part of it also. I mean, what I found out is not exactly Indian, but I was inspired from what she told me. She didn't think about the note from heaven when she said it. But what happened was that I went home and I was quite nervous about this, that somebody could hear me. And I sat and I started to do like this, and I sing, and I get like nerves, ah, ah, and it sounded not so well, you know. I thought, oh my God, you know. And, but I continued, I do what she's saying to me. And uh, then all of a sudden, I can try to come to it now, even I didn't sing. Ah. It's like, could, I don't know if you can, it can catch the mic. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I feel it. it. Some kind of other notes started to come. Like it. Overtones, yeah. I, I thought it's not me that's singing this because it sounded like a few people sang in the street. Yeah. So nobody was there. I even went outside to check. Nobody was there. So, uh, so I found it myself. And then I found out when you continue singing a long time in one note, then the controlling center of the brain will get too bored. In you know, sometimes the ego will start to say, "Okay, I don't have to take care of it." Sure, that. sure. And when it starts controlling, then your voice starts to come off. So it's actually this to borrow the ego. That's roughly said. To borrow the ego. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Yes. Yeah, so you you like, harness it. Yes, so 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 that 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 and, or, and also to make the ego so flexible that it will understand, it will have a success experience that it can see. Oh, it's she can do without me. It's actually I can gain more by by staying on the side <laughs> for for a while. It you doesn't mean, mean that mean I'm not loved. Your your true self is on the side, or the ego is on the side. What is the ego? I mean, what do you call truth? True self? The, the true self. Yeah, I mean, actually, this is a matter of training yourself to being good enough to be nothing. I see. Because, and it doesn't mean that you're not having your ego. You're a person with problems and all the things that life needs, you know. But you need, you train yourself to, to you can find a space where you can have a free time, where you can reload yourself. And if you have a problem in your normal life, oh, we'll just go into that room and then we can see what will happen. We can ask for help there and we can repair ourselves. Because the real life is necessary, like the dualistic world, and the, the other thing is a matter of opening the door that we can walk in there and walk out again. And for me, it's been, I mean, uh, I mean, I couldn't. I can't express my gratitude for that. Uh, and also when, when you can pass it on for others, it's, it's such a, you know, honor to do that. So it sounds <laughs> almost like this is a form of meditation for you. Yes. It, it has that kind of place in your life that, that meditators have, that meditation has for the, in the life of meditators. Yeah. 
Yes, uh, actually, also that's what I had tried meditation. You know, some people in the conservatorium had told me, yeah, you can, uh, would you come to meditate? And I thought, okay, meditate, should we use our time sitting doing nothing? <laughs> I'm very busy person. Right, right. <laughs> I, I, I enjoy it. And then, you know, I've always been able to, and then I see pictures and all this, I say, okay, but what should I use it for, you know? I, I've, been, I've been brought up very atheistic, so all what happened with the note from heaven has, I mean, it changed everything in my life. Because um, the note from heaven is true, you know? It's a mirror, and you get it straight in your face, and uh, it's not... It's not a hard mirror. It's just a mirror that you can feel who you are. Uh, and for example, if I would sit and sing uh, the note, just sing one note, I mean, I can hear my condition. I can hear the condition of my breath. So the way I just took my breath is expressed in the voice. So if I would just sing <gasps> up in the throat and breathe just in the breast, as many stressed people are doing, <gasps> Ah, ah, it cannot be strength, but that's why the key for the note from heaven is to come to breathe. Now I'm sitting, I'm trying to show my stomach here, <laughs> to breathe down in the stomach and get the full breath back. And then to sing the sound of the stomach, actually, we have to listen to the feelings in our stomach because we are right. They are always right. Because if you sense something, it's correct. And more and more people have lost this ability to listen for themselves. And this is what this is about, actually. Because, okay, we sing and do this. We listen to our breath. We listen to the one we are. And when you start to listen to the one we are, you also start to listen to the part of us that is spiritual. So what happened to me was also a new thing that synchronicity started to happen in my life. I started to meet the persons that I should meet. And, and you know, I didn't know how I could recognize them. But I just, it happened just. And, uh, you know, I get so excited, I'm almost shivering from it because, I mean, you just see, you just doubt, you're not doubting that this is true when it happens, you know. It's too many coincidences. You know, it cannot be it's like a flow you're riding on. So, uh, and I just experienced it when I was in Birmingham, Cheltenham, to make workshops. Now, again, it happened. So, um, so, so, so I feel it's like we're in a, a wavering kind of a world. You know, it's full of frequencies. But if we don't believe in in that we are okay as we are, if we don't listen to who we are, our frequencies will not flow with what's happening and we will not see all the possibilities that we have. I'm interested in two things, following up with you about on two points. One is that the note from heaven gives us access to what our bellies are trying to tell us and that we can't normally access through our conscious minds. And and the other question is, break down for me the practical um, routine of doing a Note from Heaven yes. session with yourself. Yes. Do I need an instrument like that? How long is it? How do you sort of manage your breath yes. if you're not a trained singer? Yes. Um, how do you overcome that self-consciousness, you know, like that you experience wanting to do it in four in the morning? So uh, there's two questions there. Yes. So um, uh, the first thing with, with the stomach singing, I mean, I don't know if we have this saying in Denmark that you have you have a stomach feeling. How do you say it in English? You have also gut like, feeling. Gut feeling. That's the gut feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. And, uh, and uh, you know, I think that we are so much now uh, listening to things from outside. We're going out, out, out. The television tells us this, and people do like this, I have to do like that. Instead of just listening to our own gods. It, it, before, we were much more with ourselves, I believe. It's also good things coming in, but we have to be conscious about it, because to balance it. 
I mean, some people say to me, oh, I work also about detoxing because I believe that if something is wrong, you have to find out what is wrong yourself. Some people say, yeah, but you should trust that the, the, the angels or spirits or heaven will do everything for you. No, no, because 50-50, <laughs> we have to balance the things because yeah, yeah. the angels or the spirits or what you will call it, the upper internet or whatever it is, they will they have the overview of things and they can help you to 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 get the real inspiration for what you have to do. But you are the hands of the angels. So you have to do it. You know? <laughs> cannot just sit and sure, sure, and, sure. And that's a big mistake I find. That some people are saying, oh, and we don't have to help anybody because there will be help from the spirits and we don't have to be active and don't worry if something is bad, there's a reason for it. And of course, but you have to, we have to be there, you know, we have to act on our gods. So that was that. Another thing is uh, the practical part, how you're doing this. Uh, the, simply, uh, the simple thing is that, I'll just go a little bit back in the stomach here. Uh, it's here. It's again down here. My experience is that the subconscious part of us is here in the gods, and that's also the subconscious that speaks to us because it's connected to the reptilian brain, actually, autonom. Yeah, 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 yeah. And this is uh, the, we can't handle that one. It's an animal inside us. We are. It's a small animal that we were in the beginning. <laughs> That's a great image. <laughs> That's why we're connected to animals, I think, because we have actually a kind of inside us. We are connected to all in the world, also the animals. So when the species now die around, and you know, I don't know how to say mm -hmm. this, but they are extinction. Extinction, yes. We are actually extinction part of ourselves, you know, uh, because we are connected with everything, the one is living. And um, and down here, this animal is speaking, you know, and we get actually worried, but but we we just quit it, the thought about it, you know. We go on because all the greed, all the fear is, the, the, it's making the ego go to take care of us, but then we, we cannot feel ourselves because you can And I do a lot to try to numb that. I yes, know, yes. That's, that's drinking alcohol and yes, yes. candy and all the bad things we do yes, to yes. ourselves. Yeah, and you disconnect yourself to the stomach because that is the reptilian brain's way when it's uh, really afraid. The more scared it will be, the more it will disconnect itself here because then it can uh, use all the power to, you know, to fight actually. And that I think also caused all the stress that is going on. It's actually the animal that is afraid. <laughs> and we, we can't even do anything about it, you know, because we don't realize that it's an animal inside us. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It had enough. <laughs> you know, it's had enough of all that. And we just continue. It's even it's screaming. But it's we, we treat ourselves the way we treat the pigs, you know, in Denmark especially. We're not good with them. <laughs> and we treat us like the, the chicken and all this, you know. So when we can start to love the animals, we will start to love ourselves also, I think. So that's a part of this with the stomach. And when we start to breathe in the stomach, we start to get into the unconscious feelings of ourselves. And some people, when I start to work with them in workshops and my education, then when they really get into it, things will come up. And people get really surprised because ah, they don't believe it when you say it. But it's really laying down there. It's like you're going down to a ground, you know, and and all kind of things laying like fertilizer to wait to be used. And when you hit it, then the energy is getting free. But the feelings, emotions will also come up. But it's not dangerous to work with this because you cannot release more than your voice can, than you can handle. Because, you know, you can speak yourself into things that you can't handle, but the voice, the breathing can't get deeper than your body will allow it to go. Interesting. So it's a very safe practice. 
I've never found anybody uh, getting into any trouble psychologically. Physically, yes, because, and that's why I'm working on it now, detoxing process can start. Because when you loosen up tensions, in these tensions in the muscles where the emotions also have been, then there's a lot of, you know, de that's where they like to be, the, all the, the toxins. So what I'm working on now is what, how can people in a very simple way support this detoxification if it happens? Because detoxing can be dangerous. I I've, I've myself have... Uh, I, know, I also have been there. So, yeah. <laughs> but the toxins, this is true. So that's why, I, I mean, it's very rare that people really get a heavy one, but if they sing themselves free, and that's what the second part of this book is about, when you, I mean, if you just sing not from heaven, you know, it's like, you can also call it that you're going down deep in the sea and it will take layer by layer, but it will do slowly, slowly. But if we going, like, if you will say, okay, I have a trauma, I like to release that. If you permit the spirit to go into it by that we telling me we will work with this and we will ask for, uh, for this to be released, then it can be a heavy thing coming out. Sure, and it's, sure, sure, it's, sure, very, sure. Very, it's, it's very effectful because it's like uh, embracing the what you call it uh, in the, the fairy tale the, <sighs> the bad one what is it called the uh, um, the, it's, it's, the it's describe it a little bit more right? um, you know uh, there are H. E. Anderson makes a lot of fairy tales also with the um, the the bad one in the fairy tale yes it? the big bad wolf. Yeah, yes, or, or yeah, whatever you're afraid of, if you embrace it and just, you know, just going into it. Lars is also talking about it in his book, The Seer, you know? Yeah, that's right. Of course. It has to run through him. Uh, and the biggest fear, if you embrace it, you're really taking a big, big step. And if it's, for example, I had one in my education that she was a famous opera singer, actually. But she, um, she, uh, we we talked about abuse. You know, we had it like a, an example because many people are abused much more than we think. And then, you know, she was German, and she is German, and you know, we, she's not tight that you will go and hug because she's like a little bit uh, reserved. You know, and that's okay. You can be like this. You shouldn't hug it or everybody. But then uh, what happened was that all of a sudden she was triggered, you know. It, it was somebody else that was singing herself free of her trauma. And that's again that when we can, we can go into the tensions of the body. And with a note from heaven, I didn't show you yet, I'm not nice. <laughs> but with a note from heaven, when you get the contact to your sound and to this way of expressing yourself truly, then you can go into attention and that's what she did she sang herself into it and when the cry come up some cry could come you sing on the cry we think wow you're so nice you're crying because then the cry is like, ooh, ooh, ooh. you'll find the right note because it will be full of overtones the cry notes are very good so she sang herself into something very serious and we don't even know, need to know what it's about but i know now because i've been through with so many, I can hear. Yeah, some that when sing. it's coming, those things are coming up. And I also get, this is another thing, what's happening when you start to work with a note from heaven and you start to listen really to yourself. Because the listening, it's not only listening for the voice that develops, even you listen just for the voice. You start, you listen, you develop yourself in all levels. So when you, when you develop your hearing, then you also develop your intuition and you start to, to get, you know, some people feel, somebody see, your senses, your senses are tuned. So you get retuned actually to yourself. And it's not about, I'm not very special, you know, everybody has this possibility. I mean, I'm special because I did it for 30 years I can say that, and I'm good in it. You know, I yes. know that, but, but, but I just say that if even people that are tone deaf, they can have such a power hidden in them. So 
But this woman, she did that, for example, it's just an example of it. And she didn't tell me because she was so scared of it. She got so terribly sick after. Terribly sick. It was all the holidays, summer holidays, so we didn't see each other for a long time. And she'd been, she was so scared she wanted to go to the doctors and doctors wanted to operate her and all kinds of things because it was terrible. But she got through it. And when we met again, she was a totally different person. She was warm and hugging and all this. And she said, what is it? <laughs> oh my gosh, wow. This kind of things can happen. But when it happens, such a big step, the body will also have such a, a toxin detox, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't want to prepare people because I don't want people to suffer. So I'm now testing all the ways. How can we do it the easiest way? So that's... I want to write in the next book. <laughs> I already have my next book, but I want to maybe make an extra chapter about that. So tell me about um, the the process of, of yes. doing this. You know, what does a session with myself look like? So what is first of all is to be able to breathe from the stomach and. And I have some different exercises, how to breathe, because number one is that you can get your stomach to be big when you breathe in. It should get out and when you exhale, it should get inside and you're doing it actively. Actually, actually it's like belly dancing. You could feel like, oh. Oh, to move the stomach out and in. And for some people, they, they made many kids already when they start school, they have the opposite breath today. And it's between, because they lose the contact with a very important part of themselves. So, uh, just to make the breath correct, we have different exercises how to do it. And, um, you know, you can do it the mind way that you, you are explained, you're doing like this, like, and some people like it the way of feelings because they can't do it when you tell them, you know, by that way. So, so you, then you can also think about something very nice you like, and ah, you know, and then, and then they press it inside the stomach like that, because to express it, you know, the, the, the nice smell of a rose, for example, ah, you know, the stomach will do it automatically. If it likes something, it will, you will breathe correctly. Because then it feels safe, the body, and then you will have the real breath. The animal is not afraid then, you know. <laughs> so you can just right. do it. <laughs> so, so what are we doing then? Now we, we, we say that the breath is okay. So it has to be pressed inside the stomach that you like all the time keeping connected to your um, grounding, actually, like this. That's why it's a safe mission, because you can't express a note from heaven without grounding. Let us see. And when you do this, the breath will be longer and longer. You have much longer breath than normal. And that's also why you detox, because that's what the doctors say, that on a long about the ex on the exhale, detoxification happens. So when you make it longer, more that makes sense. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So this is why I like this so much because it can be explained scientifically, but also spiritually. So we have all the packets there. <laughs> so uh, and and what what's happening? You can also make a very loud one because it's easier. Shall I try to do so? Take care of your ears. Is it okay? It go. Yeah. Because when you do that. It's like the, the balloon. If you fill a balloon with air and you want to make it a long sound, you make the sound the whole smaller. And now I'll do it. And then you do it like being a more nasal here. <laughs> it's not the center of the circle. It's here. Here and the, 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 the power is from the uh, sacral center. What do you call it? Hara? Uh, chakras, yeah. Yes, sir. From the stomach center. <sighs> Ah. 
you can continue like that, you know. <laughs> Long breath. Huh? Yeah. And um, and this power, when people experience that they have it, everybody has it. Just a matter of, of getting it the right way. People get really somehow high because they say, oh, I have this power. And it doesn't mean that you need to use it all the time, but the ma- fact that you know you can, you have it, it makes you feel safe. You know? yeah. and, and, and when you start to practice to be there and to get it, then you are able to shout. And you can shout and you can say, I don't want that. You can put your limits. I couldn't do that before myself. I was such a, you know, I was crying every time, you know, oh, I get sad, you know. And people, oh, now she's crying again, you know. I couldn't put a limit. I, everything was just, and I, oh, it's, I was the victim, you know. <laughs> this is before you started doing this practice. All of a sudden, I, I, I found myself uh, shouting at people and said, what, oh, what happened, you know, I, I should not shout, you know. But it, I had just to fix it, you know, that I can, man, I have know how to use my power. But it's not meant to work, the power. <laughs> and that's maybe why the politicians wouldn't like it so much that people do this. But it's, it's about <laughs> taking back your power. And, and, you know, we can do something about the situation. Uh, we, we, we just have to, uh, to first be aligned with who we are. Then, then it will happen by itself. Fantastic. Yeah, you start to feel for an animal, you start to feel for the trees, you start to see that we are all one. So, I mean, we're coming back to the Indians, I know that, but... Uh, <laughs> so, um, and another thing is also what is good for performance anxiety, because I know that from Lars, that's how we met, because I, I was teaching him it also, uh, I'm teaching him it, he was in a workshop also with it, and... Um, and even you are a very trained singer and all this. Many people, uh, they, they, they don't feel completely themselves when they're on stage. Also me, I've also had this anxiety thing. You think all performers have it a little bit, you know. Uh, so what I found out that if you're not there, you know, if, if you step aside, the ego can step aside and say, okay, it's not me. I mean, it's a voice, it's a voice of my stomach, for example. Or it's the voice of the spirit. I mean, something else will sing it through you. I'm doing this in order to serve, because that's the purpose of our being here to serve. Yes. So if you do this, then it's no problem, <laughs> because you're not there. Right. <laughs> it's actually the ego that get afraid. If you if it's not there, it's not afraid. <laughs> so it's very simple. <laughs> So like when Lars and me sing together, we're not afraid. Because when we sing together, even we sing songs and, and do things that is kind of performance thing, then it's not him, it's not me, our, our voices will melt together, so it's a third thing. So, yeah, yeah. yeah so it's... Uh... Beautiful. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's also what the Lord from Heaven, it's been such a journey because... Uh, that when you sing yourself and you sing and sing, ah, you know, for a long time, I mean, it, in the same time, it, it should be, be disciplined. In the same time, you have to listen to yourself because you feel, no, I don't want to do it anymore today. Fine. You know, you shouldn't, you, of course, you should not say, oh, I prefer to, to sit and eat ice cream. You know, it's, it's, it's a balance. You know, you have to start yourself. Now I sing. And I do it for 10 minutes and we see how I feel with it. But if, but if you will feel bad after 20 minutes, stop, you know. Ah, so anything else that you want to add, Gita? Mm, yes, the thing is that uh, when you, um, I mean, this sing yourself free, what it's also about, or regressive cell thing and what I call it, is like you can use the note from heaven like a torch or a light, you know. It is when you start to sing with this honesty where you just disa- you disappear into the sound it's like ah uh, the sounds take you it's like you've just gone into it and if you do that and you go into the feelings and just embrace them like that then if somebody would get into crying and and you know some 
if somebody will watch it in a group, they will feel very sorry for that person. But they don't have to. It's really great. It's also great to cry and say, It's oh. freeing. Yeah. 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 So it's, you shouldn't feel sorry for them. No. The problem is actually this sorry is actually the sorry for yourself because they get a longing also to do it actually. Often like that. And uh, what could happen that, that that really some people will start to cry when the other one's doing it is because this note that's coming out is resonating with them. And this I call um, a resonance with domino effect <laughs> because in a group, you know, it can be this one. Oh, then she she's head in the trauma simply because the note frequency, it the cell. You know, it's her. It feels, wow, they're hearing me, you know. And that's actually what you're doing with the notes, that you're going in and listening to the trauma. You know, many people, we know we have traumas. We just don't know how to deal with it. But it just wants to be heard. It wants to be embraced like a baby. So when we do it with the sound, we'll find exactly the frequency that it like. Where is it laying? Which frequency is it inside? And then we can communicate with it on an unconscious level. You understand? Yes. And this is, again, I think it's fantastic because people don't have to tell all what happened and all this and go into the details. My mother did that, my father did that. No. We can just take the feeling and embrace it and you see everything is, we empty the cardboard box, you know. <laughs> yes. It has happened and we have a skeleton after, but it's not really a map. It doesn't matter so much. Then. All right. Thank you so much, Gita. Very much. It was lovely. <laughs> All right. Have a good weekend. Yes, thank you. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye bye. Good Easter. You. Oh yes. You too. Thank you. Bye. bye. <laughs>